All right, so we have the wind. What else do we need? I'm going to make another skadoosh. So you can do a lot of it, a lot of the skadooshing in one skadoosh. But what I prefer to do is to just have multiple of them. So this would be our disturbance. Okay, so let's do... I'll remove that one. So we only focus on our disturbance. Disturbance is quite simple. It's just going to disturb. Blast it. We always blast it. So it's obviously too much. Uh, you can also apply this rotational force, but that's these are all the default disturbance settings. The sweet, cool part here is that under control settings, you can have multiple control settings. That's something that was not available before. So now we can use speed as one. And we can go between, I don't know, I don't know what our speed is, but we can go under mask field. So speed is done by default uh, with Pyro, calculate speed. This was not always the case, so we used to have to do our own speeds, but you can also enable this and create mask by speed. So we can visualize it. Now we can see where our mask is happening. So maybe, do, do, do. I would do, in this case, I would disable. So let's, let's, stop with the, <laughs> let's stop with the blasting, just so we get our speed values, right? And I would go under visualizers, actually, uh, yeah, density, lower the density, or just disable it. So we're visualizing our speed, and let's get the let's get the threshold. So three, three would be very slow. This you want like thirty, or like twenty. So yeah, so anything that's now in the that's not moving fast enough is not going to have any turbulent, uh, any disturbance. So put this back and disable uh, the... So we're looking at speed specifically, but also mask is going to give us the same thing because mask is the overlord. That's our main mask that we should be using as a mask field. I'm just going to put this to none and let's blast it back again. So now you can see only the speed at the top is affecting our simulation, right? And it's looking pretty good. Now, this is going to depend on um, bu 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 on your voxel size, because now this is quite low. So we need to go higher to actually start seeing our disturbance properly in action. And also, this is a big hack. Uh, it's not really a hack, but let's go outside. Actually, we don't need to go outside, but I'll show you this anyway, uh, since we are here. But once the simulation is done, you'll see this kind of looks a bit ugly. You know, we're seeing a lot of these janky shapes. Um, but honestly, once you remap the density, once you remap the density and scale it properly, like this. So we went uh, from... The viewport is quite slow. But yeah, we went through from... Come on. You can do it. This horrible thing. And let's uh, turn on the lights. That's going to make a huge difference. Yes, you can do it. Come on. Houdini, you're making it really difficult to illustrate my point. So we went from this monstrosity to this. So this feels much nicer. The disturbance now doesn't feel like it's overpowering everything. You know, these tiny little trails, they feel very organic. And all of that was because of our density scale. So all of that to say that here, once we are inside of here, this looks quite horrible now. But honestly, if we lower our density, uh, well, see, in the other example, I was not just lowering density, I was remapping it. So there's going to be a slight difference. But even this just feels much better now, right? I don't know why we don't get lights in here. It's kind of annoying, but yeah, you get my point. So something like this, so it doesn't look as horrible. Okay, let's get back on track, folks. Um, we need, so disturbance, great. We have one control view that's based on speed. Uh, we use that a lot. Another good one is based on temperature. So do we have a lot of temperature? So let's go under multi-fields. Uh, multi-field density, we said this has to be quite low. Uh, density is density. Uh, okay, so here you're going to be super low now. Great. 
So under emission, we're going to do one temperature and temperature. We don't have a lot of temperature, right? Our temperature is being dissipated with this cooling rate, so it's quite fast. So maybe instead of using, you can sometimes use that to your advantage, or like we've been uh, showing you in the custom masking uh, section, when you create your custom fields, you can create a custom field just for your noise fields, right? So if you base it on temperature or any type of field that dissipates quickly, So in this case, um, mask by field. We're going to turn that on, and we're going to say, which field do we want? Well, let's go forward, and we actually want temperature. And now, I will disable disturbance, and I will enable turbulence. It's going to be a bit more visible. Control field, yes, we have our mask. Remember, even though we're using temperature, it goes under mask. Set this to 1, and we will blast it. Maybe we need. I really want this to be more. Yeah, okay. I was going the other way because I'm so used to. So we have two different controls: uh, the kernel noise, which is how the normal noise controls work, or you can plug it into the gas turbulence. It depends what you're more used to, but I really prefer the kernel noise uh, settings. So now this. Uh, turbulence will only be affecting anything inside of our mask, which is based on our temperature field. So if, let's say, your explosion is quite linear at the beginning, and you're like, ah, this kind of looks boring, right? You can blast it. <laughs> I keep saying blast. I'm sorry. Uh, but you can just add a lot of disturbance at the beginning. You can always, you can obviously animate this, right? You can animate the amplitude value, but you can also just use, you can be creative and just use a, bus, a bunch of uh, procedural masks. So when our temperature is fully dissipated, there won't be any, any more turbulence being applied. And we can then control this even further. OK, so this would be turbulence masked by temperature, right? So let's see. Let's go back to our disturbance for a second. So we were using our speed as a mask, but let's uh, use a gradient. So a gradient is going to be a field that is created from the dot product of your volume and your the gradient of the volume and the velocity. So if you look at the, if you're imagining this, the gradient is going to be pointing in these directions. Our velocity is only pointing up or in whichever direction, or, you know, it could be going to the side, but only when the dot product is met, that's where we're going to do our mask. And that usually looks like this. So if we visualize our mask, we're going to be now visualizing our dot product. So now we're visualizing that uh, gradient. And you can see what that will give us is that only the areas where the dot product is being met uh, is where we're going to be applying more disturbance or more turbulence or more wind, whatever you want, right? You can kind of see this. Uh, I like to blur this a bit as well so it's not as sharp. And we can also start putting this down. Uh, so we can really uh, kind of erode it. So you can see where the gradient field is now actually working. So it's only kind of affecting the tippy tops of, of the... It's creating a mask. Sorry, it's creating a mask just like on the on the very t uh, tips, right? You see where it's like blue? That's not, it's not going to be affecting uh, the disturbance at all. So let's put this down. I'm going to put this to 100. I don't know what the, oh yeah, we need our density. So uh, yeah, probably too much. Let's go back to 50. So that's another way of controlling where your disturbances are going to live. So let's let this play for a while. I think it is quite fast. We can do one flipbook. Oof. There's a bit of cutting happening here, so we would need to increase our bounding box. But this mask is now being calculated very procedurally, you know, on the fly.
But if you feel like, well, great, but now some of these areas are still getting disturbed and you don't want that, you know what? Do you know what? You can create another one. Ah, we were not using... Shoot. We were not using our mask. I was using speed directly. Damn. Okay, so mask. If we now use our mask... I thought it was looking very, very similar than before. So now we're using our gradient. I'm sorry about that. Let's, I'll put this back to linear so we can see it maybe a bit more in effect. So yeah, see, like it's only, it's not doing anything here. It's only affecting it at the tops. Good. So we're back to where I thought we were, but I was saying, oh, if you think this is still being affected too much, uh, you can go to your control fields, create another one, and now use speed and put this to one and say uh, five. What was the range? I forgot, but like five to eight to 25. And now this is going to act like an additional mask, right? So you can, you can do, you can compound different masks to get the right disturbance values. And also I'll put this a bit higher because uh, that threshold is a mask automatically made based on density. And you can see that if you go under visualization, we're going to be able to see that if you disable this, poof, see, it's going to uh, affect everything. This is essentially protecting the core, but the default value is sometimes a bit too uh, low. So it's only affecting the very edges. What is the default? Yeah, 0 0.5. So I usually put this to three. So we get a bit more disturbance on the inside. Oof. Okay, let's do a quick preview of this now. I need to give you guys a warning. We usually overdo disturbance and turbulence. See, this is too much. Don't think that you need a lot of, like even this sometimes, sure, maybe a bit here, but this is looking pretty decent. We always overdo it. And you know what? We always overdo glow in compositing. Always. If you think your glow is at a perfect spot, reduce it by 50% and then, then it's going to be good. I always do this and I always overdo depth of field as well. Always. So just a bit of a warning. Okay, so we have that. And this will help us with disturbing just the tippy tops. Maybe put it, punch it a bit. So then what I would do is another gas... Uh, another skadoosh, and I would put these ones as disturbance all together. And this disturbance, I would literally just add. Let's test it. But this would be my general disturbance. I would put it through speed again. Maybe like seven, three, and ten. So this would be just like slight disturbance overall on top of everything even in the areas that are moving slow. Uh, it's a bit too much, so let's go to 15. And that's how you start layering your these uh, Skadoosh Pyro helpers. So that's good. Okay, so once we have that, what else do we need? Um, so turbulence is quite self-explanatory in terms of how it works. Uh, there's a bunch of ways of how you can add it. Uh, Usually I just use add. I haven't tested a lot of the other modes, but Corbin ha Corbin did implement them. Um, you can do the same thing here, position, gradient, speed, or any other field that you, that you create, any other custom field, you would punch it through here. Two different types of kernel noise, uh, two different types of visualizing, so gas turbulence and kernel noise. So now it's going to be crazy. Let's put this to one. So, and obviously you can add, we can animate this. So the, uh, we can do bit dollar F between uh, three ten going between one fifty and one. So it's gonna be crazy, and then at frame ten we're gonna be at one. So that's sometimes if you need to really destroy the initial shape, if it's not looking good. Uh, but I think this frequency was a bit too low. 
So you'll see now we're gonna start getting some more interesting values at the beginning. I don't like doing this because it it's very it depends on on luck. You never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's gonna look good, sometimes it's gonna look horrible. Bam. Right? So maybe this would look good. Maybe not. So we can also, uh, you know what? Remember this. Let's put this back to four. So our, our emitter is just emitting for a bit longer. Because I was seeing those trails. I was like, ah, kinda, I kind of missed those trails. But yeah, this is based on luck now, right? Um, depends on... Listen, you're going to change this. Put this to two. Now it's going to be different. Different noise, different turbulence, everything is different. So I never I never like to put uh, this based on chance. That's why we shape our explosions. I'm, I'm just going outside so I can... Instead of the stop net. That's why we shape our explosions with different emitters like this. And this will give us 80 to 90% of control over how our explosion looks like and everything else, like adding turbulence and disturbance, it's just like... Uh, the icing on the cake, right? You never want this to be... Oh, now we're getting the visualizer. Oh, wait. Oh, we lost it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, you never want to leave this to chance. So maybe 150 is even too much. So let's go to like 80. And maybe from 3 to 7. So this works. It actually looks pretty decent. You know? Ooh, okay, so what else are we missing? So we covered the mask fields, disturbance, turbulence. We did wind, uh, field force. I'm, go I'm going to show you in the next example. Uh, accelerate, I'm going to show you in the next example, or we can do it here as well. And drag. Uh, drag is quite self-explanatory, so it will give you the max speed and how much drag do you want. So if you put... Uh, let's see, if we put max speed to 1, this will be like a hard clamp. Right, so now nothing is going above one. Uh, you can use a speed ramp, so it's going to be a bit more gradual, getting to one, and then drag uh, is a multiplier. So if you want just a bit of it, or if you want a lot of drag, right, you just have to play a bit with the values, and you can also plug in multiple control fields, and also on turbulence, you can plug in multiple control fields. I I need to. Stress this. I always want two, at least two. And on the default tools, it's only one. And on the drag, you can, uh, yeah, use uh, masks, different masks, and this uh, ramp. But yeah, you just have to play around a bit with this. It is quite nice to have. I think there's a, a bit of a bug here as well. Because I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably Corbin will explain this as well when he's recreating it. So. But yeah, drag, if you put this to 0 0.3, in a lot of cases, it's just going to give you more weight to the explosion. You see, like it's slowing down. Maybe 3 is too much. Remember, if your explosion is slowing, being slowed down and your disturbance is based on speed, then you will get less disturbance. Okay, so drag. Okay, I will do a little pause because I've been recording for hours now. And I'll be right back with the, uh, let's uh, check the accelerate uh, field.